my fellow comic book collectors, it's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and this is going to be an interesting video. I hope that it's going to create some conversations. Um, often people ask me, do you want to hear the good news or do you want to hear the bad news first? And I'll say, oh, tell me the good bad news, <laughs> you know, because then, you know, the good news will be that much better. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you know, I always go with the bad news first. So I'm going to do two videos. One, I'm going to tell you the bad news. But tomorrow's video, I'm going to tell you the good news. So stay t tuned for that. So there is hope. <laughs> but let's get into the bad news. Uh, these three things, I think, are killing the comic book market as we see it today. Um, where things are actually kind of on the brink. And I'll get into that, why um, we're on the brink in a way. Um, but let's look at the three things. First thing that um, I think is really killing the comic book market is the movies. The movies that are coming out right now are, for the most part, pretty bad. Especially, um, we're putting out bad superhero movie after bad superhero movie. So just, if you keep on inundating people with superhero movies, that's that's annoying in the first place. But it's, <laughs> but it's even worse when they're just consistently bad. Um, even the ones that you'd say, oh, that's not so bad, are not that great. <laughs> There's no great movies that have come out. If you look at, like, that 2015 era, where you got, like, Endgame and all the big movies coming out, Avengers, and so many things happening, um, where there were good quality movies being produced, well, that created a huge, um, resurgence to the hobby. It just made the hobby kind of expand and grow. Well, when you have a series of bad movies for the last four years, five, six years, maybe, yeah, it's been a while, <laughs> bad movies for a while, maybe since 2016, just bad movie after bad movie, um, you know, it's, it really does um, push people out of the hobby. It, it makes people not really interested in those characters that the comic books, you know, are about. So if, if people aren't interested in the source material, well, they're going to not be interested in the comics in general, and they're going to move out of them. That's a big problem. So, you know, we had bad movies. Like, I, I can think of, like, a whole bunch right now. Black Panther 2. Terrible movie. Um, the Shazam movies didn't do that well. Yeah, I actually thought they were okay. Um, the Blue Beetle movie didn't do well. Um... You know, there's just, a, like, Thor Ragnarok. Not Thor Ragnarok, uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Just a bad movie. And then all the Star Wars stuff that's been coming out, it's just been horrible. <laughs> it's just, everything is, like, everything that should reinforce the excitement about the comic book collecting hobby is pushing people away from the comic book hobby. And this is just a prol proliferating thing. This is not even, um, you know, the comics themselves. And that's the second bad problem. <laughs> so we got the issue of comics themselves. Um, people are getting these newer comics, and for the most part, they're either a cover buy, or um, there's a few that are good stories that are mixed in. There are some modern good stories, and people are getting excited by them. But for the most part, it's a cover buy. Uh, you know, maybe some new character has been introduced and everyone's speculating on that character. Maybe they'll buy it for that reason. But for the most part, it's cover buys. And you can't sustain the hobby when nobody's actually reading the comics anymore. That The comics aren't really engaging people. Um, there's just not enough there to ma maintain the hobby. So the comics nowadays uh, have two major problems, actually. One, as I said... They're not really engaging the audiences, and two, um, they're not engaging a new audience. So generally, if you have good quality content being produced, what happens is you get your you make your current fans happy, but you, what happens is also you are building new fans. And with the comics nowadays, they're kind of more on the mature uh, reader side. They're they're geared to people like myself or people thirty plus, I would say. And they're not really geared to that younger reader. And the younger reader is going to be like uh, left out of the picture. And they're the ones that are really the ones that are going to hold the hobby up over time. So 
if we don't get those young readers into the comics, well, there's not going to be a hobby in 20, 30 years. So once we all die off, <laughs> you know, like once we die off, we need that younger generation to come into the hobby. So, you know, they're pushing away the my generation of collectors that were not interested in the modern stories. And also they're not building a new generation of potential readers. So got bad movies, bad comics. And then there's a third element, and this is really affecting people like myself, uh, which is the bad economy. When the economy is weak, um, that is actually a huge thing that can really dampen the, the ability to collect. So if the modern books aren't good, <laughs> what people will do is they'll grab it gravitate to the older books and they'll be like oh I still love these old characters this, these old storylines are really really great and they'll still collect within that however um if the economy is weak um you know a lot of those older books that are pricey um people are going to be priced out of them or people are going to be in a bad economy when they get really desperate they're going to be selling off their collections and when we see that, it's a, it's a weird um, thing where if we see that that people are moving out of the hobby, and, and it, it doesn't even mean that they actually are leaving it, that they're selling their books because they're desperate for money. Well, it, it creates a distortion where we, we are distortion and perception. That what we see is like, oh, everyone's like, they're dumping their books. Oh, they must really hate comics. And after a while, it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy that oh comics are no longer cool everyone moves out of them <laughs> so it's it can be like that where after a while like enough people just are selling their books just to make some money and like you know uh and there can be a crash just based on that where people like get this perception that hey oh the sky is falling comics are dead <laughs> like and just like we saw with the comic boom where people were seeing the flood of money into the market and thinking, oh, it, you know, there's all that excitement, right? And, you know, people are like speculating and they're like getting excited and that whole energy, well, it's very positive and you'll see the market kind of soar. Well, when the energy is the opposite way, when people are like selling their books and they're desperate for money, so they might even sell them for under the value that they're probably worth, um, well, that, that negative energy has the opposite effect and it makes people feel like, oh, maybe, maybe comics aren't cool anymore. Maybe, maybe comics is, a, it's a, it's a, it's a marketplace that is dead, you know? Um, and then these other factors where the modern comics are cool, kids aren't really interested in comics anymore, movies aren't any good. I'm not really interested in the way that they made this, this new version of the character, <laughs> And that is really driving people out of the hobby. Uh, and it can be, you know, really, really bad where you see big books even losing value. And that can be something that's major in terms of the effect. Um, just like when Amazing Fantasy had that record sale for 3.65 million, it created this energy like, wow comics are worth that much oh that's so exciting that's so great um well when a comic that once sold for 1.2 million sells for 600,000 it makes you think oh my goodness this book that I coveted <laughs> I would love to own like a detective 27 all of a sudden is worth half as much um you know what's going on what's going on this is like the biggest book in the hobby and it's worth half as much so it, it makes you start to question how much is stuff worth how much you know did I overspend on all these books that I bought like you know and it makes you sort of question your own hobby and your own intentions right and one of the things is like I know that people always say oh you shouldn't treat comics as an investment and all that kind of stuff and they they <laughs> They always, like, I'm a collector, okay? I'm not selling these books. But still, even though as a, as a collector, I love to know the value of my books and to know that I've spent wisely on the books that I bought. And when I hear that certain books have dropped half their value or even 
75% of the value, and I've seen books that have dropped 90% of the value, it kind of makes you less confident about what you've purchased. And it can actually leave a bad taste in your mouth when you've, you've paid 10 times what you should have for a book. So there can be that. Like, I, I have one book that I love. I love this book. And um, when I bought it, it was the, it was a reasonable price and it dropped. It dropped because several because of my sale, there was a bunch of other sales that happened. And all of a sudden, a book that I thought was really hard to get, all of a sudden seemed really common. <laughs> and it just, it really soured my uh, opinion about the book in a way because I felt like I'd overpaid. I paid twice as much as I probably should have. And for a book that was a lower grade. And it, it, it's, it, even though I love the book, it just feels like, ah, uh, I wish I, and you're kicking yourself because you, you felt like you, you spent incorrectly and we, we don't have infinite money. So we're, we're always thinking about those things. And so even though comics are, doesn't have to be always about an investment, those money elements do play uh, a very important part in the hobby. So when the economy is weak, it can be very discouraging for those people who are avid collectors like myself. I mean, we do see it as a buying opportunity. <laughs> uh, that's that's definitely part of it. But at the same time, um, just like FOMO happens where you feel like you're going to miss out because the book is just constantly going up, or there's the opposite effect where you feel like you got to wait. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not, I, maybe I won't buy today because that book will be down. It'll go down. It's going to go to keep on going down. It's going to be worthless, you know? So you, you almost have the opposite effect where you actually hold off on spending, even though you're an avid collector like myself. So there is like a psychology there and a bad economy can really feed that, like that negative psychology of the collector where we're, we're constantly worried about what's happening. And the other thing is with a bad economy, even a collector like, like myself, my business is suffering <laughs> from, from, you know, the bad economy, like, um, uh, you know, that's, that's part of it, right? And well, I got to tighten my belt in terms of how much I can spend on comics. And a lot of people are feeling that. Um, and then, you know, that's, it's, it's part of the game of this whole thing where you got these bad economies affecting other things. And people will say, oh, which do I want? Food <laughs> or comic? People generally choose food. I, I sometimes choose the comic, but but that being said, uh, the point is, these three things are really destroying the hobby. And tomorrow, I'll explain three things that might save the hobby. So stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure if you liked, comic, and, and you know, comment like what you think are things that are destroying the hobby. And um, remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.